Hello, my name is Yuan Liu, and I'm a junior at Lake Forest Academy in Illinois. Today, I'll be presenting about my paper, The Density of Dark Matter in the Milky Way. Dark Matter. The name itself indicates how little we know about it because it's very weakly interacting, meaning it does not emit, absorb, or reflect light. We cannot detect it using traditional methods. However, we do know it exists with the help of the works of two distinguished scientists. First, Swiss astronomers Wicke, using the Virial theorem to calculate gravitational mass, noticed that the gravitational mass of a particular galaxy was much greater than its corresponding luminous mass. This meant that the galaxy was moving way too fast for the amount of matter the luminous mass suggested there was. And Zwicky's conclusion was the existence of a non-baryonic particle that he named Dunkel Matteri, or dark matter. On the other hand, the principle of rotational velocity suggests that the farther something is from the galactic center, the less velocity it has. Thus, the graph should look like the line labeled disk in this graph. But when observing the galaxy NGC 3198, Vera Rubin noticed the discrepancy between the actual graph, which is the line on top, and the supposed disk line. This was the foundation for what we know today as the dark matter halo, a spherical halo of dark matter at the edges of galaxies. And in my study, we're going to investigate the density of dark matter in our galaxy, the Milky Way. To begin, we first use five dark matter profiles presented here in the functions rho of r, with r being the radius or distance to the galactic center. Rho of s is a normalization factor, while r of s is the scale radius that moves the profile's radius up and down. We set the alpha variable in the inosto profile to 0.17, but because the inosto profile sometimes causes steeper values at the cusp, we also add another inosto profile called inosto B with a smaller alpha variable of 0.11. And using the listed data here, we can isolate the rho of s variable as a function of r of s and subsequently the value of r of s. Of course, this is all coded with a computer program, which will also give us a graph that we'll see in the next slide. I also performed the same procedure using updated data values from more recent observations. And these are the resulting graphs from the dark matter profile program. This graph is the same as one of the reference articles that I used. And as you can see, the graph here compiled through my previously described procedure is almost exactly the same. And we also discovered that the isothermal profile is not compatible with the updated values and therefore did not graph it, as you can see in this final third graph. Next, we use rotational velocity data from three components of the galaxy, the bulge, the disk, and the dark matter halo. There's also a fourth component, which is the black hole at the galactic center, but because it has little effect beyond the immediate vicinity of the galactic center, we disregarded it. And here is the scatter plot of our data with the gray lines being standard deviation. Using mathematical equations for each of the components, we manually altered the parameters to best fit the given graph or the given scatter plot, and these are our resulting scale radii and normalization constant values for each component and the compiled graph. We used the NFW profile, the first dark matter profile in the previous slide for its popularity and also its most extensive history. And for the final part of our study, we similarly fitted the equations for the three galactical components, but this time using the Python wrapper, Minuet, for the chi-square test, which is used in statistics. It's a numerical evaluation of how close a fit is, and the smaller the result, the better. By increments of 0.1, we implemented the same program for each row value with the chi-square test being the smallest when rho was equal to 0 
with uh, chi-squared being 39.28 as shown here in the table. And also here in the graph at right, the closest fit is when rho is equal to 0 0.5. And finally, we included rho as a parameter so the computer would do the incrementing for us. This time we also added the INOSTO and Burkert profiles to test, returning with the values shown here in the table and very, very closely fitted rotational velocity graphs here. As you can see, the uh, NFW dark matter profile is still the closest fit with the smallest chi-squared value. And for our final result, the density of dark matter in the Milky Way, at least using the NFW profile, was 0 0.532 giga electron volts per cube centimeters. These are my references, and thank you for listening.